Continuing on with the chapter 7 review problems, now we are solving equations. So the directions say solve each equation, don't forget to check for extraneous solutions. So here we have the equation x over 10 plus 3 over 5 equals x over 20. And the first thing I'm going to do is look at those denominators and think about what I could multiply by that would allow me to cancel out all those denominators. So I need something that is a multiple of 10, it's got to be divisible by 10, and by 5, and by 20. And actually, 20 would work. So I multiply both sides of this equation by 20. Then 20 times x over 10 would just be 2x. The 20 divided by 10 leaves me with 2 times the x on, on top is 2x. When I take 20 times 3 over 5, I get 12. That's because the 20 divided by 5 is 4, and then 4 times 3 is 12. And on the other side of the equal sign, 20 times x over 20 is just x, because 20 divided by 20 is 1, and then 1 times x is x. So now I have the equation 2x plus 12 equals x, I subtract x on both sides, and subtract 12 on both sides, and I get x equals negative 12. So that is the solution. Next equation, 8 over x minus 1 minus 4 equals 2x over x minus 1. There are two denominators, but they're the same thing, so if I want to eliminate both of them, I can just multiply both sides of this equation by x minus 1. So x minus 1 times 8 over x minus 1 would just leave me with 8. The x minus 1 over x minus 1 is 1, cancels out. Minus 4 times x minus 1 equals... And over on the other side, the x minus 1's cancel. 2x over x minus 1 times x minus 1 would just be 2x. Now, get the parentheses out of the way, multiply this out, and we get 8 minus 4x plus 4 equals 2x. I can combine like terms over here. The 8 plus 4 would be 12, and I got rid of the minus 4x by adding plus 4x to both sides. So 12 equals 6x and then divide both sides by 6, and I get x equals 2. Now, careful, if I put 2 in for x, would that give me a 0 in the denominator back in the original equation? No, it wouldn't. We're okay, because 2 minus 1 would be 1, and it's okay to have a 1 in the denominator, so that should be a legitimate solution. This equation would be true when x is 2. Next one, can you tell what I'm going to multiply by on both sides to eliminate this denominator? x minus 3, yeah. So if I multiply both sides of this equation by x minus 3, the x minus 3's cancel and we get 6, equals the x minus 3's cancel and we get 2x, plus 5 times x minus 3. If you multiply that out, it's a 5x minus 15. Combine like terms, the 2x plus 5x is 7x. Add 15 to both sides, we get 21 equals 7x. Then divide both sides by 7, and x equals 3. But this time, if you go back up to the equation we started with, and try putting in 3 in place of x, down here where we have x minus 3 in the denominator, that's going to be 3 minus 3, which is 0. And 6 over 0 is undefined. You can't have a 0 in the denominator. So that means that this 3 is not really a solution that works in the equation we started with. It's an extraneous solution, which means there is no solution to this equation. Number 14, 18 over x equals 144 over 20. Now we could do this 
the way we were doing those others where we multiply both sides by the same thing. But since this is set up like a proportion with just one fraction equal to another fraction, a shortcut would be to cross multiply 18 times 20 equals 144 times x. So if we do that, 18 times 20 would be 360. We have 360 equals 144x. Then divide both sides by 144, and we get x equals, well, 360 divided by 144 is 2.5. That's the solution. So now some word problems. A 10-ounce jar of peanut butter costs $1.30. If the cost is proportional to the size of the jar, how much should a 16-ounce jar cost? So this is a proportionality problem, and we're going to set up the equation as something over something equals something over something. One fraction equals another fraction. And I decided to put ounces on top and money, dollars, on the bottom. So 10 ounces over $1.30 should equal 16 ounces over however much that should cost. We're trying to find the cost, the amount of money, for the 16-ounce jar. So for the first jar, it's 10 ounces and $1.30. For the second jar, it's 16 ounces, and we're trying to find out X dollars. So that's the equation we have to solve. If I cross-multiply, I get 10 times X equals 16 times 1.30, which my calculator gives me as 20.8. Then to go from 10x to x, divide both sides by 10, and we get x equals 2.08. That is $2.08. This is also a proportionality problem because it says the two triangles are similar. And when you have similar triangles, the sides are in the same proportion. So we're trying to find this missing side here, this side of the bigger triangle. And we can set it up so that 12 over x equals 15 over 20. So on each side of the equal sign, we have a side of the little triangle on top over a side of the bigger triangle on the bottom. 12 over x equals 15 over 20. Then if you cross multiply, you get 12 times 20 equals 15 times x. So 240 equals 15x. Divide both sides by 15, and you get x equals 16. And all of these lengths were in centimeters, so this would be 16 centimeters. Here we have a work problem. Jay can shovel a sidewalk in 50 minutes by himself. K would take 40 minutes to shovel the same sidewalk. If the two of them work together, how long would it take them to shovel the whole thing? Remember how to set up these word problems. We're trying to find the amount of time for them working together. And if we call that X, let X stand for the time it would take for J and K to do the whole job together, then the amount done in one minute by J plus the amount done in one minute by K equals the amount done in one minute by J and K together. So that would be 1 over 50 plus 1 over 40 equals 1 over X. So that's the equation I have to solve. 1 over 50 plus 1 over 40 equals 1 over X. And to solve that, I notice that to eliminate all those denominators, I need something that's divisible by 50, and also by 40, and also by x, something that's a multiple of all three of those, and the lowest common multiple is 200x. So I multiplied both sides of the equation by 200x. 200x divided by 50 is 4x, plus 200x divided by 40 is 5x, and then 200x divided by x is 200. So now I have the non-fractional equation, 4x plus 5x equals 200. Combine like terms, and that's 9x equals 200. 
divide both sides by 9, and I get x equals 22.2, and really the 2's repeat, but about 22.2 minutes for j and k to do the thing together. This is a bonus problem, so I'm going to skip it and come back to it later. Same thing with number 19, but let's jump to number 20. Simplify complex fractions. So on top we have a little fraction with a denominator of n plus 1. On the bottom we have two little fractions with denominators n and n plus 1. If I want to cancel out all those little fractions, I'm going to multiply the numerator of the whole thing and the denominator of the whole thing by what would be the lowest common denominator of those little fractions, which is n times n plus 1. So I'm multiplying the big top and the big bottom by n times n plus 1. So on top, the n plus 1 over n plus 1 cancels, and we have 3n. On the bottom, when I take n times n plus 1 times 1 over n, the n over n cancels, and I get 1 times n plus 1, minus, when I take 5 over n plus 1 and multiply it by n times n plus 1, the n plus 1 over n plus 1 cancels, and I have 5n. So on the bottom, that's n plus 1 minus 5n, which, when you combine the n terms, is negative 4n plus 1. So that's my answer. I've simplified to 3n over negative 4n plus 1. And number 21. 8 minus 4 fifths over 4 fifths plus 1. If I want to do this the way I did the last one, what do I have to multiply by on top and on the bottom that will allow me to cancel out these little denominators here. Well, they're both 5, so let's just multiply by 5. So the numerator of the whole thing and the denominator of the whole thing both get multiplied by 5. So now 8 times 5 is 40. Minus 4 over 5 times 5 is just 4. And on the bottom, 4 over 5 times 5 would just be 4 plus 1 times 5 would be 5. So now 40 minus 4 is 36 on top, 4 plus 5 is 9 on the bottom, and 36 over 9, 36 divided by 9, is 4. There's one more bonus problem, but I'm going to stop this video here, and those three bonus problems are in a separate video that you can watch next if you want.